my name is Matt. I'm a paramedic at Atlantic Mobile Health in New Jersey. I'm going to bring you on one of my shifts to show you what it's like to be a paramedic during this pandemic. Good morning. We start our day off with a truck check. A little different now that it's a COVID-19. We actually have to spend a significant amount of time deconning all this equipment. We have a lot of cloth and fabric. We only bring in the amount of equipment that we need into the actual scene. Stop. It's been it's 7:20. You already have two cases of cardiac arrest. And the dispatch has been non-stop, which is COVID positive. I would say it's almost like a relief not having a COVID positive patient nowadays. And the elements that we have to deal with makes donning and doffing PPE very difficult. We're not inside, um, not in a controlled environment. Where it's a very dynamic and fluid job and uh, especially if you deal with hot, cold, rain, snow. Um, it's, a, it's an additional challenge on top of the challenge we have to keep ourselves safe with the COVID. A lot of these calls that we used to get that were respiratory distress, coughing, um, congestion, fevers, now are just cardiac arrest, cardiac arrest, cardiac arrest. It's my first day back after getting COVID myself, we had, with the span of two units, pronounced five people before 11 o'clock even hit. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a very, tiring experience, um, very tiring uh, mentally, physically, emotionally, everything because um, we are paramedics and we do this job because we want to help. We want to be able to help people and during the COVID-19 we were just helpless and that was just another pronouncement that just went over the radio um, and that's just like on a daily basis now and, and it's, it's, it's very disheartening and uh, very emotionally taxing. And not just that, we're also losing our coworkers left and right. We had a 24 year old EMT and 33 year old EMT die. Um, another one of our fellow, fellow EMTs here who got sick at the same time with me at the same exposure, he's in the ICU right now on events. So yeah, it's, um, it's, it's a difficult time for all of us. So, I went to 9-11. The first day when that happened, we watched the buildings come down. Two days later, I was on the pile for 18 hours. We knew the enemy, we could see the enemy. We knew how to safeguard ourselves. We knew how to protect ourselves to come home to our loved ones. This thing, we don't have a clue. We can't see it. We don't know how to defend against it. And the most frightening thing not only for us to get it, but to bring it home to our families. My 40 years of being a paramedic, I have never been afraid to go to work before. And today I am. Avenue, 49 year old female, COVID questionable, shortage of breath and hypertension. Time now is 9.05. So dispatchers went out. I'm gonna be going to Medic floor is on right. Respond to our shortness of breath, possible COVID. Put back in and ready to go. Wanna cue medic floor is arriving. Oh, I have to dream of three. Medic floor is arriving. Medic floor is arriving. Alright, so we arrived. Hey, what's up, Wayne? Hey, I'm keeping an eye on What's up? What's, what's going on? Got a swollen leg going on since Saturday. Got a fever. It's not, it's not, it's because of what happened. You'll see. Low blood pressure, though. We gotta get it going. Okay, Last gotcha. Last unit calls him down to overlook repeat. We're still gonna take full PPE, okay, Wayne? One of the hardest things we're dealing with is when we're taking a sick COVID patient out of the home to go to the hospital.
telling the loved ones that they can't come with them. Be by their side, hold their hand. And in some cases, it may be the last time they ever see their family member alive again. This virus just is, is very, very difficult for the job. It's changed the job completely. Um, when I left work because I got sick with COVID, um, I came back two weeks later and it was a completely different job, a completely different world. Um, the way we dress and treat people is a lot to describe as combat medicine. All I do is hold their hand. Um, pronouncements are horrible because you're standing there in this sterile gown, mask, you can't comfort anyone. It's just awful. It's just, there's no comfort. Like the whole interaction with your patient is completely different. You're walking in to a room with somebody who's super sick. They can't read your body language. You're gowned up. You're wearing a mask. They can't see your face. They can't see if you're smiling. They can't see if you're nervous. I guess sometimes that's a good thing, right? But they can't be comforted by like your look. You're just like two pairs of eyes. You know, we were talking about it before, but it's also a very weird thing. And I've had to tell several friends, several family members, look, if, you're, if your grandmother, if your mom, if your father goes to the hospital, one, you can't, you can't go in there with them. And two, there's a good chance that they're they're not going to come out. Yeah, I still am, but big on like covering your patients, smiling at them, holding their hand, putting a hand on their shoulder. But now you have to be cognizant on every time you touch somebody or everything you do, because then you're putting yourself at risk. I think our aspect and our level of care has, has changed. I think we've gone for a more um, very objective way of looking at things. If so, for example, if patient's short of breath, then we treat that, that shortness of breath. The, the, if the patient's in cardiac arrest, then we, then we treat that cardiac arrest. And so now it's, it's way different because our, our protocols have changed because of this virus. So instead of giving patients nebulizer treatments and essentially nebulizing that virus into the air, now we're just being told, give them oxygen, cover their face, and just get them over to the hospital. It's way more supplementive care than anything, um, and that's a very and that's a very weird thing to do because you want to help the patient more, but the reality is you don't want to. You're riding that fine line between helping the patient, but also trying to avoid getting sick yourself and essentially becoming out of the fight, which is which is a very very weird headspace to be in because it's almost like it's counterproductive in all the training that we've had. We, in our area, we used to have a cardiac arrest a pronouncement maybe a couple a week, but now we're having a couple a day. Um, like I miss seeing like my family and going to see my mom and on my day off going to see my parents and you know, now I can't, we go see each other through the door. I mean, everything's just so different. I have a son with a heart condition. So he's had to unfortunately uh, stay with his mother for the last two and a half months. Um, I don't get to see him, um, and that's a choice that was a hard one, but had to be made to keep him safe, um, just because I never know what I'm bringing home. And I, I wonder how when this actually all, there's a lull and all this settles down, how this is actually going to change our profession in the whole, because are we going to go into every single respiratory call differently? Are we going to treat every patient differently now that we know that this is a possibility? Like, when does this go away or does it ever go away? I'm hopeful things will things will change for the better, but um, I guess I guess time will tell. We'll find out. So I just found out one of my coworkers in the ICU from the COVID is, uh, is getting terminally extubated. He was a great guy. He funny, always willing to help. Passion and true passion for this this career. You no, know, we hear on the news about people dying everywhere. It doesn't really hit home. It hasn't hit home until recently. After I got it, after my coworkers start dying. Family, friends.
So we just got dispatched to a uh, motor vehicle accident on Route 23. Yeah, everything's out of there. Um, it sounds like it's a pretty bad motor vehicle accident. They have a helicopter coming in already. So we're gonna go assess to see what's happening. Hey, sure the gun consciousness is stolen trap is this front. You doing what? Gun consciousness is stolen trap. Let me see, but I'll find an ETA. over here that's one there's a bumper involved. yep there's a bumper there oh it looks like they went actually went over where's, where's the car oh the car where's the ambulance yeah i think you got a ring coming too all right, all right so, so we're without an ambulance right now let's see what you get <laughs> better cars on location no be on You need the collar? They brought the collar. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we just finished stabilizing the patient. We got into the helicopter back there. Uh, the patient was alert and conscious. Is very lucky to actually get out of the vehicle. Um, it's very tough in a situation like this because we don't know whether they have COVID-19 or not have COVID-19. It really hinders the job that we have to do. Um, on normal scene, we can just approach a patient and do a full assessment. But in a day in a pandemic like this, we had to take proper PPE precautions. And you can see one of the uh, things here, we had to pull down up to protect ourselves. Um, now the patient's gonna be flown down to Morris Medi Morristown Medical Center um, to be assessed. really gotten most of us through this though is the community support. If you look around in Chilton here, we have posters across the street that community has left and uh, where to support. There's stones with painted messages of encouragement on them and, and just so much support and that's really gotten us through. So uh, we can all get through this together. Well, what keeps you going each day? Um, probably my coworkers. We are a very tight knit. I look at it like my co-workers are my battle buddies and I come to work for them. Um, being a paramedic, being an, an EMS, uh, being a first responder, it's all about teamwork and I show up for them. My co-workers, my co-workers, you know, when we're together, we talk, we laugh, you know, and just knowing that we're all safe and doing what we can, it, yeah. it keeps me going. I gotta be strong, just keep pushing on, cause there's always gonna we are going to be in a less reactive society and, and hopefully pointing more towards a proactive society in terms of healthcare and uh, in, in how we do things. I think that everybody that puts on this uniform comes to work every day through the things that we've gone through, takes care of people and takes care of each other. I think, I think it's just, just who we are. That's what we are. Um, it's not what we do, it's who we are. And I've never been more proud to be part of this community than I have over the past couple of months.
emotional day. Uh, my coworker and friend, Scott, um, has passed away. Uh, he was a EMT at Atlantic Mobile Health and a true hero. Um, we as paramedics and people in the EMS field do this to be able to help people and help others. And it's very tough during this time where we are unable to help just due to the way COVID-19 works. The only thing we can do is to try to be strong and supportive to the family around. And I think at this time, it's really important for us to all come together as community, um, put our differences aside. It doesn't matter what uh, background you come from, what race you are, what gender, what profession you are. We are all part of this together and put things aside and really demonstrate what love and humanity is about. Um, we all need to rely on each other and really stay strong and push through this time. So I'm going to sign off for the night. I pray that everybody stays healthy and safe. And um, yes, until we meet again.